So today we are in the next few minutes. Actually, when I was preparing at some point, I felt like Niko Kwa Jim. At some point, I felt like uh, I'm just having a walk out there. At some point, I felt like an engineer. So I don't know how you'll feel as you listen to me, but I'll deliver what the Lord has placed in my heart. And the topic is remove your sandals. Remove your sandals. I've already removed mine. <laughs> now, what does barefoot, walking barefoot do? Disclaimer, I'm not a medical doctor, so the medical doctors can correct me. <laughs> walking barefoot, number one, most nerve endings are under the feet. Most nerve endings are under the feet. And it is said that domestic animals fall sick more than wild animals because domestic animals are kept in the house and they don't interact with nature as much as the wild animals out there. Then in our environment, there is a lot of static electricity that uh, comes in. When you get home, you take your remote and you watch your TV, you are, getting, you are getting some static electricity. You use your phone, you use your iPad, you use your laptop, you use the microwave you, when you want to drink water, you go to the dispenser. All this is electricity getting into your body. So when you remove your shoes and you walk barefoot, not in your carpet in your house, but in a natural environment, then what happens is you reduce stress, you relieve muscle pain and inflammation, you boost your energy levels, you improve your balance. The place is not steep, the place is not as uh, high, but ananguka tu and lose balance because we are so used to wearing shoes and we are not used to working in a natural environment. So if you need some natural environment, you can get here, up Kwa Bishop's Garden. Just remove your shoes and walk barefoot and you'll feel the difference. Or you can talk to Sister Dr. Kabare there. She can give you a discount to enter Utembe Imani Park. Right? It's Imani Park or Imani Gardens. Imani Park, yes. So she can give you a discount. Just go and walk and you'll feel the feel of it. Uh, I forgot to say I am a, mar a married lady, married to one man. I said Nikikumbuka and Takwa Nazisema as they come. I'm a mother of five biological children and several spiritual children. Uh, in this service, two of the children are there. I know one is up in the media and uh, one is right there. The second born is in the media. The last born is right there. Yeah. Smama <laughs> too. Yes, that's, that's the baby of the house. She looks like a baby, but she's a fourth year student in Kenyatta University. Amen. Yeah, and she's the last born. So you can guess how old I am. So walking improves your balance. It improves awareness. You are more conscious as you walk barefoot. If you are walking and you have your shoes and you step on something, you will not bother. But when you are walking and you don't have shoes, you'll be very careful on how you are stepping on the ground. So it increases your awareness and it activates your brain as you walk because you are careful you, you don't want to hurt your foot. You, de you develop strong feet and leg muscles. You get better control of your foot position. That's why some people, even when they are not drunk, they cannot stand on one leg because that balance has been interfered with by constant wearing of a shoe. It's also hygienic. Right now it's hot, so hatuna shida ya kuoga wandugu buwana asifiwe. But when it's so cold, when it is cold, huwa unabagain. Huwa unabagain na baridi na maji. Na kama ulikuwa hiyo WhatsApp group una left. Because of the cold. Uh, then you console yourself. Ni meshinda na socks na viatu. Miguzangu si chafu. Na juku na baridi si jasweat. So naezalala tuivo. 
But when you've been walking barefoot, you'll be prompted that kama hautaoga, utaosha nini? Migu. So it becomes hygienic. But ukiji comfort ati nimeshinda na socks na viatu, utalala na jasho. So it becomes very unhygienic. Now modern shoes are against the order of nature. Ukiangalia under your foot, kuna this depression, it's called the arch. Between your toes, your toes and your heel, there's a depression. What the modern shoemaker does is that ana makes you in a funga your depression, right? But nature does not want that depression ifungwe. That's why when you are going to be recruited in the disciplined services, wanataka kuona chini ya mgu. Because that depression is very important, it's supposed to be there. That's a story for another day, but ask yourself, why do you think they look under the feet? You are so healthy, you are tall, you are strong, but chini ya mgu ineza ikaku angusha. So the modern shoe also goes against the order of nature by feeling that depression so that you can walk comfortably in shoes, but you can easily lose your balance. When you're also barefoot in a natural environment, you connect with Mother Earth. You are connecting with Mother Earth. And I don't know why it was called Mother, but we are going to look at it uh, as time goes by. So when you connect with Mother Earth, number one, you are marking your territory. Let's look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, media. Joshua 1, 3. Every place that the sole of your, the sole of your shoe, the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. So it was a ter territory marker. As you walk and as you step, and it is the sole of your foot, he will give it to you. And I was listening to something that really made me thinking that there's a certain community that is taking over a certain town here in Kenya. And what they do is that they wake up in the dead of the night and they walk barefoot around the town. And then, asubui sazile tumeamuka kuomba na wanabiashara kuenda soko, they are going back home barefoot. And they are taking that town building after building. Why? They have discovered that there is something about walking barefoot. So wakati mkristo umemaliza midnight prayer, umelala, wale wakuamuka five, ndi wanapanga kuamuka, by the time they are waking up, these people are going back home. So barefoot makes you mark your territory. It is a desti destiny connector. Mother Earth gives us food, shelter, and clothing. And if we've been with you in some... Uh, groups, maybe I've shared this with you, but I'll share with uh, us anyway because I'm not in the same WhatsApp group with all of us. When you have your breakfast, a simple breakfast, which is chai na mkate, Sindio, a simple breakfast, wachana na zile za sausage na nini na nini. Take that cup of tea. It is connecting you to many people that you might never ever meet in life. Ukichukua maji, chai ni maji, maziwa, majani, naskari. That water, where has it come from if you are in Nairobi? Adam in Dakaine. So God is connecting you to someone who made sure that water is purified and piped. Na kanjo wakakakikisha imefika kwa nyumba yako. That's a chain of people you might never meet. Chukua skari. God is connecting you to someone in Mumias. And he has entered your kitchen without your getting to know him. That, that sugar cane was planted, harvested, processed, transported, and it's now in Nairobi. So God gives you destiny connectors that you might never ever meet in life. Maziwa, a farmer somewhere in the Rift Valley or somewhere in Central. Amenda, amekamua ngombe. It has been processed, 
and packaged and it's now in your kitchen. You might never ever meet these people, but God is giving you an invisible connection line. Tea leaves, majani, all the way from Kericho. You've never stepped into Kericho. Labda palembali umefika ni hapa limuru, but God is connecting you to someone from Kericho who picked that tea physically and it was processed and packaged and transported. Ah, wote ni watu mungu wana kukonect nao. The one who was packaged, the lorry driver who, drive, who drove it, the turn boy and the people who are picking the boxes, putting it into a supermarket and a retailer bringing it to Zimmerman and you walking to buy it. The origin ni wapi? Kericho. So, iyo kikombe moja ya chai, umeenda ndakaine, ukeenda mumias, ukeenda kericho, then now when you're having your bread, that wheat farmer in Narok, mwenye alienda kuiharvest, ikawa processed, mpaka ifike, kwa mwenye kupika, na apike, na iwekwe kwa, ikue packaged na ipelekwe supermarket. God is giving you all that, connection. So anytime you take anything simple, ata kama ni your bottled water, think of that destiny connector that God is giving you that you may never ever meet in life. Uh, Mother Earth is also a protector. And I was thinking of uh, an arrester and I thought, arrester, if you ask me in my own language, nikitu huwa ina, inashika lightning, Inaileta chini, ndio isiaribu nini, nyumba. So I had to consult somebody, a, a close relative of mine who is an engineer, and you at least angalao nikae professional kidogo. Nikiwambia arresta ni nini. <laughs> so this is the description that I was given by an engineer, and I told her, just tell me in a layman's language the work of an arrester. Lightning arrester protects the building from being hit or destroyed by lightning. Lightning travels from the clouds to the ground and looks for the lowest resistance or best path. At first, there is no alternative, so it travels through air. When it reaches the highest tree or building or power line or transformer, it passes through it. A lightning arrester has lower resistance than buildings, trees, power lines, etc. It is also placed from slightly higher than the roof. So basically the work of an arrester is to protect that tall building or that vital installation that is very high. So it takes it now from the lightning, uh, from the air to the ground. So the lightning strike goes through it to the ground. When it reaches the ground, it is neutralized. So, Mother Earth is also there to protect us. Because if Mother Earth would not take this the power of this lightning, it would end up injuring a large number of people. At times, and uh, I saw Pastor Kibera yesterday uh, burying one of the young men in this church. At times of burial, Mother Earth is a visual symbol of saying goodbye. It takes us a step closer to closure. When you are taking that soil and you are throwing it into the ground, what are you saying? The difference between you and me is that there is life in me. Otherwise, sisi wote ni nini? Ni mchanga. So, because you, the difference now between you and this soil is that you once walked up here. This soil has never worked. So because you have gone back to where you came from, and I still have life in me, I release you. That's why it's very difficult sometimes for close family members to give that release. Ni mchanga tu, utachukua mchanga na utupe. And when you are burying someone who's not so close to you, you even see people smiling, eh, hey, ni aje uko apa. But for someone who is very close, it is a symbol of, I am, I have life in me. Mimi ni mchanga kama hii ni meshika. Wewe ni mchanga kama hii ni meshika. The difference is, 
there is life in me, there is no life in you, so I release you, so that nibaki hapa ju. So it also helps us to find closure when we are burying loved ones. Now, there's also walking backwards, which is also an exercise. Just walking backwards. Now, what does it help us with? It improves, it improves endurance. You are, it improves the endurance of your face. It places a challenge on your body and your mind because as I'm going backwards, I'm careful, nisigonge easy. So you are also giving yourself a mental exercise as you are exercising your body. It improves your cardiovascular system. Your heart becomes stronger and then it enhances the burning of calories. So in the spiritual, you also need to walk backwards. Recently we had the restart edition and the essence of this was that where did you lose it? Go back, find it, and then start again. So in the spiritual, you can also walk backwards. By the way, you can walk backwards physically and become very strong physically, but in the spiritual, you are moving, you are not making any progress. Let us look at uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Revelation 2, verse 1 to 5. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things says he who holds the seven stars of his, or in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. You have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored, labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Remember, therefore, you have left your first love. Go back, discover where you lost it, then start moving again. So in the spiritual, you can also walk backwards. And what does it do? It, it, improves, it, it improves your endurance, places a challenge on your body and mind because you have to think of where you lost it as you go back and come back. It will improve your heart and, your, and will burn calories. Let us look at uh, Joshua 1.5. Joshua 1.5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses, this is uh, uh, Joshua being told, God telling Joshua, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, not forsake you. What God is saying, Joshua, as I was with Moses, remember how I was with Moses. Have a mental walk backwards. Fikiria vile nilikuwa na Musa, that is the same way I will be with you. So he's being told to, have, to walk backwards. God Let's look at 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17, verse 33. And Saul said to David, this is the time David alijijaza. Akaseme ya nezaua Goliath. And he's saying, and Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep and when a lion and a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth and when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. David is having a mental walk backwards. Yes, this is a giant who has been fighting from his youth, but I've killed a lion and I've killed a bear, so I can also do what? Kill him. So as a believer, you can also walk back and see what God has done in the past and have confidence that he can do it again. 
Yesterday, Pastor Millicent took us to a walk backwards. Na kafika 2021, when she needed 3 million, and she had 100,000. And God provided the 3 million at the end of the day. That was a mental walk backwards. She also told us of, by the way, look for that message, you'll be blessed. She also told us how she was, she learned how to drive her first time from the city center to Zimmerman, Akiwa Meka Hazard, the, the whole way. It was a mental walk backwards. And she's saying, I needed three million, I had a hundred thousand, God provided, and she said, Sayata mutwa kiniambia 20 million, sistuki, why? What does walking backward do? It strengthens your heart. So, even us who less listened, we are strengthened that if I need this, God can provide. If she can drive on hazard once, right now I'm sure I'm going to end the safari rally. So, it's good when you walk backwards and see what God has done in the past, then have energy to do what? To move forward. Now, potential dangers of uh, walking barefoot. Number one, injury due to terrain, temperature, or sharp objects, or you can get bacteria infections, and we'll be looking at that uh, in a little bit uh, uh, later. Now, the, what is the significance of walking barefoot? Number one, you are confined. You are not your own. How many have ever been arrested? Now, see, no, I'm gone. Say, ma, tuki moyo moyo ni mimi. Wakati unaingizi wa sel, unambia gwa nini? Toa kia tumoja, toa belt. Afu uingie. It means you are not your own. And it's, it's now th your identity. You know, when your friend comes visiting Rafiki yake hapo kwa sel, your friend will be having two shoes. So atakwambia, ah, nimekuja kuona beste yangu. But you, you cannot pretend that you have come visiting. Why? It's your identity. You have one shoe and mine as a belt. That's a story for another day. So it, it, walking barefoot will tell you you are not your own. It has a certain identity. It's also demeaning. Let us look at Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse, verse 5, 5 to 10. Deuteronomy 25, 5 to 10. If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the widow of the dead man shall not be married to a stranger outside the family. Her husband's brother shall go into her, take her as his wife, and perform the duty of her husband's brother to her. And it shall be that the firstborn son which she bears will succeed to the name of the dead brother, that his name may not be blotted out of Israel. But if the man does not want to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife Go up to the gate to the elders and say, My husband's brother refuses to raise up a name to his brother in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak to him. But if he stands firm, but if Umeruka, Nyuma, then his brother's wife shall come to him in the presence of the elders. Remove his sandal from his foot, spit on his face, and answer to say, so shall it be done to the man who will, be, who will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel the house of him who had his sandal removed. Do I need to explain that? I think it's self-explanatory. Let's go on. So when... You are barefoot, it's a demeaning sign. Your brother's wife removed your sandal and spat on your face. It's demeaning. Uh, it, it also signifies re relinqu relinquishing of your rights. Let's look at Ruth chapter 4, verse 1 to 8. Ruth 4, 1 to 8. Now Boaz went up to the gate and sat down there, and behold, the close relative of Boaz had spoken of whom Boaz had spoken came by. So Boaz said, come aside, friend, sit down here. So he came aside and sat down. 
And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, sit down here. So they sat down. Then he said to the close relative, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, sold the piece of land which belonged to our brother Elimelech. And I thought to inform you, saying, buy it back in the presence of the inhabitants of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is no one but you to redeem it, and I am next after you. And he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, on the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you must also buy it from Ruth the, the Moabites, the wife of the dead, to perpetuate the name of the dead through his inheritance. And the close relative said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I ruin my own inheritance. You redeem my right of redemption for yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Now, this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging to confirm anything. One man took off his sandal and gave it to another, and this was a confirmation in Israel. Therefore, the close relative said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, and he took off his sandal. So it's also a transaction. I cannot buy this. I want you to buy it on my behalf. So he removes the sandal and gives it to the one he feels is right to buy it. So you are also relinquishing your rights by removing that one sandal. Then let's look at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 to 6. Isaiah 9, 2 to 6. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light is shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Just hold it there. Three. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. They are rejoicing, not that there is harvest, but they are rejoicing as if there is harvest. And the men are rejoicing, not because they've come from want, there's a spoil. They are rejoicing vile hua wanafurai when they, are, they have come from war and there is a spoil. Let's continue. For you, and that's a capital Y, for you have broken the yoke of his burden and staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every warrior's sandals, listen to that. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. Umepigana na adui, umemshinda, umemtoa viatu, hizo nguo zake ambazo zimeloa damu, umetoa na zikachomwa. Why? Let's go to verse 6 now. For unto us a child is born. He who shindiyote is because unto us a child is born. Even before this child is born, the enemy has been defeated. Amevuliwa nguo, akatoloa viatu, nazi kachomwa. And Pastor Millicent the other day told us, alinyanganyo mpaka ufunguoza kwake, na akawa paraded naked, after being paraded naked, hizo nguo amevuliwa, zimelo adamu amevuliwa, viatu amevuliwa, na zika chomwa. That's how powerful our savior is. Why is all that happening? Because unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Believers, we need to walk in victory because our enemy has been totally, totally, totally defeated. He's a powerless enemy and we are in complete triumph. Then it also shows total dependence for provision and protection. Let us look at Luke 10:34. Go your way, behold, I send you. Yeah, Luke 10, 3 to 4. Go your way, Luke 10, chap, uh, chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. Go your way, behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money, bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. Don't carry anything and go barefoot. Meaning, 
the Lord will provide for you. Hamujabeba pesa na mukomugutupu. The Lord will protect your feet and the Lord will provide for everything that you need. So when you are barefoot, you are totally depending on the one who will provide for you. Then let's go to John chapter 1, verse 25. And they asked him, saying, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? That is John the Baptist when he was being challenged whether he's the prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do, no, you do not know. It is he who, coming after me, is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to lose. Whose sandal strap I am not worthy to lose. John is, just as he said, I decrease that he may increase. And when Jesus came to the scene, John stepped aside and said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of man. So he's saying, even doing the worst job for him, kumtoa viatu, I cannot. I'm a very small person. Ni kama we uitwe uambiwe umepewa kazi state house ya kuosha vyombo. Unasema mimi, state house, ata kufika kwa gate sifai. Ata kukata nyazi sifai, sasa ni jikoni nitafika nioshe vyombo. That's how John was feeling. I'm a very small, insignificant person. Even doing the lowest job for him, I am not worthy. So it's a sign of unworthiness. Then we'll wind up with Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Exodus 3, verse 1 to 5. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. Moses is sensitive to his environment. He would have said, wacha ichomeke, Niendele kutend hizi kondo na mbuzi, then kesho ntakuja nione vile kulikuwa. But he decided to stand and see what is happening. He took his time. And as a believer, how sensitive are you to your environment? And that's one thing I like asking. Ukiwa unatembea na ambulance ipite. Do you pray for that patient in there? Amu nasema, oh ye, oh ishe. When a fire brigade is passing, do you pray for the destination? If you can see your moto, na your moto is you we mutu is you mise mutu. Ama unwa yonanga tu. No I say, ah, na easy is my moto kwanza itafika na haina maji. Are you sensitive to your environment, whatever goes on around you? So Moses sees this burning bush and he stands and looks at it. So when the Lord saw that he turned. So it was a sign. Supposing he did not stand, we would not be reading this. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. Karibu amwambie, how many times have I called you? Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. So when we remove our shoes, it's also a sign of reverence. And Mark, you, you can remove your shoes in the physical and in the spiritual, you are walking very wrong. You can be a pastor with a collar, but inside, when you are wanasemanga mchungaji mlakondo. I remember growing up, we used to pass a certain home and it was a very big home, and it had a beautiful house, and then dotted with several huts. So one day we asked our mom, Kwani inyumba inakwanga na nani? And she told us, Mwenye hiyo boma, anasemanga ye ni mungu. That house had very many huts, and women, and children. So mwenye hiyo boma, anasemanga ye ni mungu. So any member of his congregation 
if you lose your husband he will take you si yeye ni mungu na mungu ni mme wa wajane <laughs> so when you lose your husband then unaenda kwa mume wa wajane and you go with your children and you get more children that's why the the compound had the compound had the main house and then the other huts za wake wa mungu so you can be a pastor with a collar and with a robe but inside you are very far from being a pastor and you can come with your dreadlocks and your ragged jeans but inside you are a pastor so it shows reverence when you remove your shoes highest worship you are powerless i come before you i have no power i depend on you humility and recognition of your unworthiness like john the baptist vulnerability i have nothing i depend on you in capability i also depend on you i can do nothing on my own respect and decreasing that he may increase so when you put on your shoes you are ready for war before you put on your shoes make sure you have put off your shoes and gathered enough stamina to enter into war so when you put on your shoes you are ready for action you are ready to fight you are ready to stand and defend let's look at luke 22:35 and he said to them when i sent you without money bag money bag knapsack and sandals did you lack anything so they said nothing then he said to them but now he who has a money bag let him take it and likewise a knapsack a knapsack and he who has, a, has no sword let him sell his garment and buy one when you are preparing for war you have already gathered enough stamina without anything and depending on god and that's why we are told in Ephesians 6:11 to put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil you gain stamina when you are barefoot then when you are ready you can now put on and move now we've been walking with shoes for so long how do we start walking barefoot number one, it needs time patience and the right information to start walking barefoot you need to be patient it needs time patience and the right information start slowly usiseme sasa triple h alisema tutoe viatu unatoa start what slowly in the physical start with 15 to 20 minutes of walking barefoot in the spiritual take time to learn If we are going for prayer and fasting for 40 days and you are a new believer and you've never fasted start slowly start with the partial fast maybe you can be jumping one day or another don't just say bishop amesema ni 40 days ni 40 days dry fast start slowly in the spiritual start learning things slowly as you move and as you progress number two. is up if you feel a new pain or discomfort when you've walked barefoot and you feel some pain and discomfort relax kidogo in the physical your muscles have lost strength and need to regain them gradually if you are not flowing in your area of service consult if you realize you are an asha na unakosana na ashas wenzako unakosana na washirika or in your area of ministry you are not flowing slow down and consult practice on sa- on safe surfaces usitoke hapa na uanze kukanyaga committee road mugu anza kwako kwa nyumba polepole kuja hapa bishops garden kidogo as you progress in the physical once you have mastered indoors try outdoor surfaces in the spiritual sit and learn under spiritual authority here at DCIKZ we have discipleship classes and we have the father's vision that's how you start slowly useme umeokoka leo 
then uliota ati bishop ame vasuti ya black ukakuja church ukakuta bishop ako na suti ya black you are now a prophetess you want to open your church no L sit under spiritual authority and learn Exper experiment with balance exercise in the physical stand on one foot or press yourself up or onto your toes and lower down slowly in the spiritual take a daily check of your life in line with the word of God as you do those gradual exercises in the physical in the spiritual also check how your life is performing in line with the word of God now try an activity that requires you to be barefoot in the physical take advantage take advantage of any outdoor activity ukisikia men wanaenda mwithi grounds kuchinja mbuzi please Join them and remove your shoes, tembea barefoot kidogo. Take advantage of any opportunity you get. If you are a ladies group, kama ile akina ana kisagi inaenda focus, please, usipeane excuse, join them and go. Take advantage and walk barefoot. Take advantage of any opportunity you get to walk barefoot. In the spiritual, take advantage of any opportunity to fellowship and to serve. Now, finally, at the end of the day, examine your feet for injuries. Examine your feet for injuries. In the physical, at the end of the, of the barefoot walk, examine your toes and the bottom of your feet for injury. In the spiritual, at the end of your day, ask yourself the following questions questions not limited to this this is just an example at the end of the day father as i look back on the day i feel at the end of the day how are you feeling you are now examining your bare feet to see if you have any injuries at the end of this day father this is how i feel one thing that happened today that i regret is then have a mental walk and think what happened today that I'm regretting. That one you are checking your bare feet for any injuries. One thing that happened today that I celebrate. Did anything good happen today that I'm celebrating? Have a mental walk through the day and think about it and note it down. One thing I will try to do better tomorrow. Kamulienda ukagonga mawe. Tomorrow I'll try and not hit. If you walked on a thorny surface, tomorrow I'll try and not walk on that thorny surface. Amen? Are you feeling like you are from the gym? God bless you so much. That was my time. And may God help us to walk barefoot. Amen? Let me finish, sorry. Let me finish by the final scripture. That is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, just to find out how we have fared. Sasa ni exam time. Sini mwambia mini mutuwa SOL. Hebrews 4, verse 2. Hebrews 4, verse 2 says, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who had it. So the word you have heard today, all of us have heard it. Has it profited you? Will it profit you going forward? What are you going to do about it? And may God bless us all as we walk barefoot in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we rise up and pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this time that you've given unto us to listen to your word and even to have a mental walk on our bare feet. I pray that the word is going to sink among each and every member, including myself, and that we are going to walk according to your word and that we are going to keep our lives in check. We praise you, we bless you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.